Hello YouTube. Here we are with the eMac in the workshop. So, because I'm gonna put a bigger hard drive in, I have a big 250 gigabyte Western Digital drive with its name on it to go in here to replace the 160 gigabyte drive in there. Because 160 gigs is not enough uh, for me if I'm gonna be using this for my utility work. Which my utility work is videos and audio. So, yeah. I figure if this thing can't be a video machine, it will be an excellent, excellent audio machine. So, because of the Texas Instruments sound chip, as you saw in the previous video, but I'll show you guys how to open one of these. First, you got to find a soft server, such as this mat I have on my workshop floor here. Make sure to flip, flip this thing over gently onto its front. There you can see the cooling fan I was talking about. It uses all... Allen keys, so make sure you have a good Allen key set here. Is this one? That's inch. My green one will work. So make sure you get one of these. Just an Allen key set of some kind. Come on, focus, you idiot. Whatever. There you go. So what you gotta do is on each side they have the, uh, different screws. There's actually a couple Phillips heads down there. Just right there. And there's these, which are the Allen ones. What I'm going to do first is remove the RAM door. And then undo all the Allen screws and these two Phillips head screws here and take the back off. It's 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 kind of like taking the back of a CRT monitor off. Okay, how about the screws out now? Take Now it should literally just lift out. I'm going to have to do this with two hands, so I'll put the camera under my chin. And here we have it. Here we have the board. There's the speakers for you. They are Foster speakers, apparently. At least Foster drivers. Interesting. Now this looks like the inside of a CRT monitor, as you can see right here. You have the, uh, the high voltage cable right there. You have the... Uh, that's a big capacitor. Jeez. <laughs> it looks like... Where's the flyback? Hmm. So I think there would be flyback adjustments in here somewhere. Oh, here it is. There's the flyback. So you can actually adjust the flyback of the monitor if it's screwing up. That's That right there is the analog board. Which I'm sure is removable. What on earth is this? I just gotta find where the hard drive is in one of these things. Oh, I think I know where it is. I think it's under the shroud here. All everything's just probably under there. The fan is actually thermally controlled as you can see right there. They sort of did the same thing that Dell did. This fan is nasty. I should probably clean that. <clears throat> so. What I will do. Is unscrew this and see what happens. See what's here. Okay, I just charged the CRT and removed all 50 million screws and managed to get the logic board out which holds many many of the things holds a DVD drive down there a bunch of SUSCON capacitors in here and here's the Apple supplied Seagate hard drive as you can see it's it's an OEM drive because it, because of that Apple logo. So there you have it. I'm going to replace this drive with a 250 gigabyte one in just a second here. There. The eMac has been reassembled. Man, that thing's a pain in the ass to work on. Holy crap. Jeez. Yeah, if you're going to work on these things, make sure you have a lot of... Make sure when you go in there... You just get, if you have a bunch of things to do this thing, do it all at once. Because it'll just make life a lot easier when you have to open it. Because opening this thing up is a project in of itself. 
So I have a 250 gig drive installed in here. I moved the 160 into my workshop computer there. Now I have to reinstall an operating system on there. And I also have to reinstall the operating system on this thing. So, yeah. Okay, I brought the EMAC back upstairs in its ideal location now, which is next to this computer in my room here. And, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of worried because there's not much ventilation back here, but it doesn't seem to make the fan run that fast, and it doesn't, and the air that comes out of there isn't that hot, so I'm just not going to worry about it. I originally tried to put uh, my keyboard, I'll show you my keyboard here, my big old electric piano. I tried to take it off its stands and move it over there, but unfortunately the speakers aren't shielded properly. So whenever, I, uh, basically it barely fit on this desk here, so the side of that piano was bumped up right against here, and the fact that this has a CRT in it made that a problem because the little magnet sort of distorted the picture on the CRT. So unfortunately, I can't move my piano over here and use it as a MIDI box. I I was hoping that would be possible, but mm -mm. I'll use it. I'm just what I'm what I had to do was uh, rearrange my uh, whole thing here. I got rid of my big Bozak speakers. They're over here. So now all I have are the Technic speakers I got from the Goodwill, just sitting here. I made a big mess and moved my vinyl around and everything. And uh, I'll have I'll use this area for cassettes and transfer them using this Mac here, and I'll just save records and video for my studio computer over here. So that's what purpose this Emacs going to serve. It's going to be uh, used for converting tapes. And well, that's really it, I guess. Uh, I'll just show you uh, how I've reconditioned it a little bit. It's a little bit different from when I first got it. When I first got it, I, w I tried to use it as a real machine to see what I could do. But PowerPC is aging quite quickly. So it, it's it gotten to the point where I'm going to use this as a utility machine. I did plug an Ethernet into the uh, uh, computer over there, and I'm using Internet connection sharing on Windows right now on that computer. But until I get an airport card, that'll have to do. So for now, I'll just show you what all goes on here. Let's turn the machine on. There's a nice bong there. There's the hard drive spinning up. It sounds much different than the Seagate does. And there's proof that, that replacing that hard drive works just fine. Now the EMAC itself, let me just discuss the design of the EMAC. Um, this e the EMAC is the direct successor to the uh, to this design that the iMac G3s had. Now, the, some of the iMac G3s actually had a design where you could pull a logic board out without having to dismantle the back. This one, as you saw earlier in the video, this the eMac is more like a CRT is more is designed more like a standalone CRT would be, such as this one right here, where you would unscrew the back and pull the back shroud off, and you'd have access to everything. The same applies here, except that this uses Allen screws all along the side and everything. You take the back shroud off, you have access to to everything on the bottom, including the uh, CRT uh, unit itself, the tube, the uh, flyback adjustments, everything. But uh, the thing that um, annoys me the most about this eMac is that you have to take that shroud off and you have to... It's, it's a big deal to change the hard drive and to take the logic board out. It's, it's, it's much more of a project than uh, some of the older iMacs were. Although I like this design a lot better than the iMac G4, much much better. This is a this is just a much better computer than that in my opinion. Better gra you get a better graphics card. You uh you it's it's just a much better machine than the iMac G4 was. That was the one that looked like a lamp with the swiveling um LCD screen. If you remember that design at all. And this was around the same time. This is a 2005 model, so it was a it was rather late in the game as far as that design goes 
But the thing that uh, bothers me the most about the eMac is that they designed it to be very tough. They really did. You go, you when I went in there to work on it earlier, it, it, everything was very, very well fastened together. It was tight. Everything was just tight, taut. You could drop this thing down the stairs and it would still work probably. Um, but the one thing I did notice is that it, they didn't really design it for the techni with the technician in mind as much as I wish they would have. There's no, it's, it's not as convenient as uh, other Macs where you can just, where you get full access to the RAM and hard drive right there. This one you only get access to the RAM and the PRAM battery and the DVD drive really. You have to open it up to change the hard drive, and I find that a little annoying. That's just my one pet peeve about working on this thing. Other than that, it's a it's a it's a great machine. Uh, Power PC is getting up there. It's still it's still new enough to be somewhat useful right now, but I figure uh, soon enough here, Power PC is gonna be not quite be as it's not gonna be modern enough to be as useful for certain things. So. With that in mind, I've made this sort of a utility machine. I'm going to use it for mostly audio, some videos, not too many though, so because I still have iLife 06 on here, and I can use iMovie 06 to edit some of the videos, at least the standard deaf ones. So what have I put in the dock this time since I rebuilt it? I've put Camino back in there, but I got the G4 optimized build of it, as you can see with the icon there. I got a G4 optimized version of uh, Camino. So this is a really good browser to use if you're on a PowerPC Mac still that has a G4 or G5 processor or so. Yes, set that as my default browser. Of course, it can't find the address because that computer's not turned on. I still have uh, iMovie HD in there, which is iMovie 06, iDVD, GarageBand. I have an older version of Audacity and a newer one because one can be buggier than the other preview for the pictures and system references. It's nothing special. It's just going to be a utility machine. So, yeah. It's definitely good to, to have lying around to do certain things with. I will say that. But uh, that was just, that's a small, that's my small little opinion on the eMac. I think it was a great idea because it's tough. It's a very tough computer. So it, it could, it definitely survived uh, the education market. This actually came out of a school, so it definitely survived the education market. I mean, it's in great condition. There's really nothing other than that, what's left over from the sticker that's still there. And it lived up to its name. It's a tough computer. But, I mean, what really drove it out of exi what really drove it uh, away from uh, being manufactured anymore was the CRT in it. That's kind of what made it age as quickly as it did, unfortunately. The, uh, as once it got to be around 2005, 2006, it was the only real eMac with a CRT, the only, well, the only Mac that came with a CRT, so it was kind of bulky compared to everything else. And, you know, I mean, originally the eMac was made because CRTs were cheaper than LCD screens. That's the simple reason they were made. And, the edu and in the education market, you try to cut corners on cost as much as you possibly can, and this is definitely a good example of them doing that. I mean, you can see now uh, schools buying a lot more Dells than Apple computers, as far as I've seen. When, when, I, when I'm at schools, I usually see Dells and Apple computers. Not much else. Sometimes HPs, but it's mostly Dells and... Um, Max, such as iMacs or something, or even uh, Mac Pros. I've used a few Mac Pros in the college I used to go to, but I digress. Anyhow, this is what I think of it. It's a nifty machine. It's a cool machine. I like it. I like it more than the iMac G3 because it takes a full-size optical drive, and it's a little bit easier to. Uh, uh, keep compatibility with than some of the older ones. It, it's a nice machine. I like it. So that's just my little thing about the eMac and its upgrades and what I'm going to be using it for and all that. So I hope you enjoyed the video and have a good one everybody. Ciao.